Egypt unleashing a second round of airstrikes against ISIS targets, retribution for the beheadings of more than a dozen Egyptian Christians. And today the White House begins a summit aimed at countering terrorism, but that summit is already getting criticism. Let's bring in David Gartenstein Ross. He's our counterterrorism expert and senior fellow at the Foundation of Defense of Democracy, Democracies, and Philip Mudd. He's our CNN counterterrorism analyst and former CIA counterterrorism official. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. We'll get to the summit in a minute, but let's talk about the news of the day and what's happening that Egypt is doing. Phil, I'll start with you. In the past 24 hours, Egypt has launched more airstrikes in Libya on ISIS targets. Do we know what they're hitting and if they're making a dent? No, I don't, but I look at what they talked about from the outset, and it wasn't what I would expect to see if we're going to succeed. They talked about revenge. They did not talk about a campaign that might endure long enough to really incapacitate ISIS, and that's a campaign I would anticipate lasting potentially years. I don't have a lot of faith that the Egyptians can do a lot of damage here. I think what they're doing is striking a few targets just to prove politically back home that they're going to avenge the loss of those 21 Coptic Christians. I don't see a lot coming out. Out of this. Well, the Egyptians say they're doing more than just hitting a couple of targets. Last night, the foreign minister was on CNN talking to Aaron Burnett. Let me play for you what he said they go beyond airstrikes. Uh, and we have uh, undertaken uh, activities related to restricting the finances and uh, recruitment measures of uh, ISIS. Uh, this is uh, a participation of a military uh, uh, nature. Uh, and we will continue to support the, the coalition and be part of it in various degrees and uh, through uh, various measures. Okay, so various measures, David, he's saying in terms of financing, in terms of recruitment and military, are you hopeful about Egypt's role? Uh, yes, I am. Um, and part of the reason why is because ISIS really is not a major player in Libya. Uh, they finally have a geographic stronghold in Libya, which they did not have before. <clears throat> they were able to take over the city of Nafalia, which, um, you know, all of your viewers, I guarantee, would have to look this up on a map. I had to look it up on a map, and I follow Libya day to day. And the reason why is because Nafalia is a marginal town. It has about 10,000 people in it. Uh, after they tried to get a stronghold in Derna and make inroads there and really were less successful than most people thought. Uh, they conquered this out of the way town, which didn't have other jihadist presence. Um, if you look at the major war in Libya, it's between two different coalitions, uh, the Dignity Coalition and the Dawn Coalition. The Dawn Coalition uh, includes a variety of actors, some of which are Islamist leaning, some of which um, are in there based upon geography. Uh, but uh, when the Islamic State carried out its attack in Tripoli against that hotel, which hosts Western diplomats, uh, the security forces that were against them were part of the Dawn Coalition, the coalition that's uh, frequently thought of as an Islamist leaning coalition. Mm -hmm. So there's a var variety of actors. ISIS is not the big actor in Libya. And the other place where you have an ISIS presence is in Egypt, Sinai, where uh, a jihadist group, Ansar Bayt al-Muqdis, uh, recently, back in November, uh, took a pledge of bayat or allegiance uh, to ISIS. And since then, the mm -hmm. Egyptian state has also gone hard after that group and tried to uh, restrict a lot of the movement of fighters and finances and weaponry into Sinai. So I'm not saying that things are going to go great for Egypt, mm -hmm. um, but ISIS is in a much less strong position in North Africa than it is in Iraq and Syria. Uh, uh, Phil, any chance that Egypt can play a larger role in the coalition? No, I think they can. If you look at successful interventions against Islamist groups around the region, you've seen coalitions, the African Union successful in Somalia. There are conversations just this week among some of the African countries that border Nigeria, where Boko Haram has been such a scourge. I think those conversations are really encouraging. You need a coalition approach to some of these expanding Islamist groups. So I think if the Egyptians start talking to the Algerians and others, and frankly to the Americans about how to sustain an effort over time, this could be successful, but the Egyptians alone, given the, given the chaos we've seen in Libya after the fall of Gaddafi, I don't think mm. it can uh, resolve the problem there. Okay, David, let's talk about this summit that's happening at the White House starting today. It's already being criticized. One of the things that pundits say they don't like is that it is about how to combat extremism, but they're not <coughs> calling it Islamic extremism. They're just saying extremism. How do you feel about that? 
I think it's a matter of rhetoric. It's not problematic. There are a variety of kinds of extremism, um, and we just saw um, an, uh, well, an apparent act of extremism in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, in which Muslims were the victims and not the perpetrators. Um, but that being said, I think um, part of the question with respect to this problem of the growth of jihadism is it has grown massively over the course of the past four years. And it seems to me that the White House still doesn't have a good understanding as to why that's happening. I mean, we're 14 years into the global war on terrorism, and you just had this groundbreaking article in The Atlantic by Graham Wood arguing that we should take ISIS's theology seriously. Mm. The fact that 14 years into GWAT, we're still arguing about mm. whether religious ideas matter <clears throat> indicates that I think we don't have a good understanding of of the extent to which uh, these uh, groups are able to um, have their message permeate. Philip, we don't have much time, but what do you want to see come out of this White House summit? What I want to see happen won't happen, and that is if there are conversations about how to talk to kids at risk in major American cities, I think those could be successful, sort of like gang intervention programs. I fear, though, that we're going to try to say that we can counter message ISIS in a world that is the Islamic world where we have no credibility. If I were at this conference, I'd be taking a nap, because if that's the message, we don't have anywhere to go. All right. Uh, Philip Mudd, always great to get your perspective on things. David Gorton, Ross. Thank you. Thanks so much, gentlemen.